What's going on, YouTube? It's Biggs, uh, bringing you a Star Wars Unlimited Power. No, game video on just who is this game for? Um, I already showed you guys like a little bit of sample gameplay. Uh, I wanted to talk a little bit more, though, just because we had pre-release weekend happen. Um, no product. I mean, there are plenty of people who got product early. Uh, apparently, there was like issues where people ordered pre-release kits that were getting shipped on time. And they ordered like i guess bulk or like large quantities so people definitely already have some showcases you'll see already floating around some commons on commons etc on tcg player uh by the way for my people who are new to tcgs or like picked up one piece you already know but i'll just give a disclaimer do not buy pre-order prices especially for commons and uncommons there's no shot in hell that they're going to be two dollars <laughs> uh, they usually drop down to cents. Uh, luckily for Star Wars Unlimited, a lot of your deck will be common, uncommon, because there's just a lot of really good playable cards, which is good for the game. Not, it shouldn't be where every card has to be a rare, because that uh, feels bad when you only get one rare, maybe two if you're lucky, in a pack. Um, they want to make the you know the game welcoming, which I appreciate. Uh, I said this in my community post, like after posting like, you know, my poll, which was super sick. We got a uh, legendary Boba character, um, which, you know, you get like three, if you're lucky, four to five being like the high end. If you got like a foil or something crazy like that out of your booster box. Uh, so just to get it in my six packs, plus I got two winter packs um, for just playing the game and getting like you know further into my rounds which is really cool um uh what was i gonna say let's edit that out future me um so yeah it was really cool we got to play some games it was actually my first time getting to play with people i have not tried the game on force table otherwise i would have been uploading videos for you guys um i wanted to wait a little bit like i said I wanted to see if I really wanted to commit to the game. And honestly, even playing in a limited format, I had a blast. I had a pretty sick uh, pool of cards, which I'll go over in a minute. But I do want to talk about, again, who is this game for? Is it right for you? If you're a One Piece card game player, should you even bother with this? I know, you know, One Piece is hot right now. You have Worlds, which is like, what a day to be a gamer. <laughs> I had pre-release in the morning later on in the afternoon we'll have or the evening we'll have our worlds event taking place the streams are going to be up so looking forward to that I'm hoping na goes far um because there's always a lot of trash talk between all the regions so be nice to see who's actual top dog but even though it's a dog dog format <laughs> i hate opo5 um but anyway so the game takes a lot of uh, elements from other TCGs. Uh, if you've played Runeterra, that back and forth is there. Uh, I know there's a lot of similarities to Star Wars Destiny. Unfortunately, I never got into it. Um, so forgive me for not knowing that like that game existed, what uh, common ground the two TCGs have. Unfortunately, I, I'm not aware. Um, but that isn't to say like there hasn't been other instances of this and it's really good i for one as someone who's played magic i do like that there's more interaction in the game um one piece you know for as much as i love the game it was a nice breath of fresh air it does have those moments where it just feels like well my opponent got to play their turn do some crazy stuff and i don't really have much way of answering dealing with it kind of just gotta suck it up uh in certain situations um, if I'm not a deck like Sakazuki, where like, you know, I can also play to my board while doing crazy shenanigans to, to answer theirs, you, you kind of feel bad. <laughs> so there's, there's just that missing element. Right, again, for me, who's someone who's played a lot of games, like, um, there were some things that were definitely were miss, uh, in one piece, which I do appreciate exists in this game. Um, so again, if you're someone who likes to interact more, this is probably, you know, something for you to look at. Um, there'll be people who say, oh, why don't I just play Magic? You know, Magic is literally 
top three will always have support this game will never die blah 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 uh again it's different uh the way that you're interacting with each other there's no counter spells thank god <laughs> um and you know it, it also incorporates that like casual element that people love about commanders like you get to play as your favorite heroes um you get to combine different um decision making when i'm deciding to resource something which is something you know for newer people who've never played magic like you have to build your deck with lands in mind so you have to build with those percentages like will i be able to draw my lands on time will i um have a high enough land count to hit my you know fifth sixth land to play xyz card like those are all very mechanical things that go into playing magic uh that i think you know if you've never played it uh seems bad to like the new person coming in it's like well what if i don't hit my lands it happens <laughs> that has definitely happened to me i've been mana screwed or flooded so i've either had too little mana or too much mana and i never drew my cards <laughs> Uh, that's just you know shuffle rng unfortunately so this at least lets you determine like okay well i can you know play resources every turn if you want to um some decks like i said depends on your curve kind of like one piece sometimes you don't have to have that many resources um on the other end of the spectrum where it becomes a much harder choice is when you're choosing what to resource uh that's always a skill intensive part of the game so it's not just free as you go through the game like there was definitely a moment today where i was like man if i had resourced that second copy of removal i would have been okay <laughs> um but unfortunately that's what it was that's a very important aspect as i went over in the video your ability to choose uh who gets the action token or the uh initiative token rather that's huge like Again, I lost the game today. Uh, it was best two out of three, so it was, we got to play it out. But I lost the game because I should have probably taken the initiative as opposed to trying to just swing an extra two, three damage. Um, I did get to feel smart one time. <laughs> uh, this game, as I was going through the, the rules a little bit, you can pass. You do not have to claim as your pass to your opponent for the turn. Uh, so I caught someone who didn't know uh right away all right we're all learning i'm still learning i'm a noob um but pass is a legitimate thing to do like i don't have to play a card on my action so i can just pass it back to you let you do what you want to do he ended up attacking with a unit i was like yes that means i can play my unit without having being traded um because he had a bunch of three power bodies and i had a, a four power guy but only three health so i was able to squeeze an extra four damage in before he can do anything about it so again uh, things like that are very, very important. Passing is very strategic. Claiming the initiative is very strategic. It adds a very big layer of strategy to the game that, you know, doesn't exist. Like, uh, imagine if Runeterra, I, I can go first a couple times in a turn or like in sequences. So like, that's pretty good. Um, what else is there about the game? So if you like that, you like competitive games, um, which I actually do think that the game was made for the players. I do think that the game is designed in a way where it promotes a healthy environment for players to play the game. Uh, it's not going to be some cash grab, at least I'm hoping. I know there's a lot of stuff to be said about the company, FFG. I know a lot of games they've had have, even games that ran hot, have lost their support after a little while but i know that they've put a lot into this game um as far as making sure product is readily available um competitive play having different ways to play the game which i think is huge and i wish one piece would wake the hell up and realize like casual formats are good <laughs> um twin suns is a format where you'll get to play two leaders um in your base so you'll be able to open up how many colors you want you can probably stick in more of like those double aspect colors if cards uh if your leaders overlap in some way so that's good good design like there's limitations you can't play heroes with villains like in twin sons your two leaders will either be villain or hero uh so 
It's four player format. The game ends when someone dies, um, is how I understand it. Uh, so that's a fun experience too, because that just prevents, you know, the people who are on the outside in, like if I lost early and I just have to watch my friends play a game or, you know, <laughs> play on my phone or something. Uh, while it goes on for like another hour. So that's that's a cool like secondary casual format. It's singleton, which, you know, if you're a magic player, I know that always adds a dynamic factor to the game. Like every game will be different because you're only playing one of each card. Um, you'll have access to different parts of your deck at different points in the game. So it's, it's interesting, it's fun, and it's gonna grow. So if you like casual formats, Twin Suns is like your commander-esque format, which is really healthy. I think it's really cool. Um, the main state of the game is a rotational format, which again, comes with its up and downs. So you'll have to buy new cards technically if I wanna keep playing the game like competitively. There's no mention of like older format, like uh, Legacy and Magic, Modern, etc. Like if they're gonna support formats so that you can keep playing your older cards. We don't know that. Um, at the moment, we do have some really cool stuff. Uh, and I like it a lot. Again, like it just appeals to the strategist in me. I love playing games where like every decision matters. Where One Piece was kind of like that and it kind of goes up and down. Um, but yeah. Now, some things against the game. Uh, if you don't like to invest time uh, into these games, because they can go pretty long. Uh, at least from the sealed games today, like I had an issue, and I'm going to get into it in a minute, uh, with the amount of time granted our sealed play unfortunately because of the way they scheduled the events like it was only 30 minutes around which is not a lot um but like i'm i'm trying to think on a bigger picture of like what would happen in a situation like in a big tournament but again i'm gonna get there in a second <laughs> uh if you like to play your best of ones if you're a fan of the way one piece is run um this is probably not for you it's already been stated it's a best of three with 10 card sideboards which is nice again Another plus if you're a Magic player who likes that ability to counterplay a little. Um, but yeah, uh, that is like something against the game and a small thing. It's not even anything crazy. Um, it is very strategic, but it is easy to learn. But I will say like if you're not putting in the time to um, learn the cards, uh, learn your matchups, because they're much more in depth than things like One Piece. Because again, there's no counterplay there. It's like you just reveal your leader and go from there. Um, now, the biggest problem I have with the game are the two big rules that got announced and then kind of threw the community in an uproar. Is in official events, you're only allowed to play with the officially licensed game genic playmats. I understand that there's a bunch of reasons why. I just think it's dumb. You can just outright ban any inappropriate material on playmats. Um, every car trap has that one guy for whatever reason has to have some, you know, adult theme, provocative stuff. You know, it is what it is, but that is supposedly, honestly, it just sounds like a cash grab. Game Genic is also in with Asmodee, the person producing the game. So it's like, it's just two ways to win, I guess. <laughs> but it's a little lame in my opinion. Uh, I think any officially licensed Star Wars maybe would have been a nice way around it for people who are coming in from like the older Star Wars card games, whatever. And then the big one, the one that cost me a game today <laughs> uh, is there are no tiebreakers in this game. Um, if time goes and you're both 1-1, you're not tying, you're losing, both of you. Uh, there is no ties, there are no draw-ins in this game. Their reasoning supposedly is they don't want the draw-ins for people to get into top cut. I know that happens a lot in Magic, that can throw off the numbers. Um, I guess on some level they thought it would be a way to counter slow play, it does not. <laughs> it encourages slow play. Um, Cause you always have those people um, you know who take longer to make their decisions you have people who will timer scam you you'll have people who are losing on board states in game two and then decide to slow up um and it just results in a, a really awful situation like literally i saw another player do it and then i had to do it with my opponent later on in the day 
where we had to roll a dice. Uh, we had no time. Again, our rounds were cut short, so we did not have the standard amount of time to play a best two of three. Uh, obviously, 30 minutes is not enough for any game. Um, <clears throat> certainly not Star Wars. So, unfortunately, it is what it is. But, um, I do want to say, like, you have to think, like, in a money situation, because they do plan to have very large tournaments for this going forward. That is the plan. I'm hoping it takes off. Again, I want this game to succeed. But that is... That is bad. Uh, I think having some way to determine a winner in those situations is better than just a double game loss. Because um, then you just get in these situations where like, why don't I just roll dice? <laughs> why aren't we just playing on the corner then rolling dice for money? Because that's what's going to happen. Like, if you're not playing aggro decks or something like that, like, what am I doing? Um, so yeah, I'm, I'm not a fan of that rule. So far, they've been really receptive to the community and like communicating with us. So I'm really hoping that they determine a better way to resolve this because it sucks. <laughs> uh, I was playing for a pack and that's literally it. So it wasn't a big deal to me personally. But again, imagine you're in a tournament situation and that's what happens to you. That's awful. Um, but yeah. With all that said, um, there aren't too many negatives to this game besides the the history of the company and the um, that one timing rule. I think is definitely needs to be looked at again because um, it's it's not going to be a healthy thing. It's going to be really well poorly received by the community. It already has been. Uh, and then you know that little thing with the art stuff. It's not a big deal to me. I like collecting play mats like. I know I shouldn't be spending more money on nonsense, but, <laughs> but it is fun. I, I just bought one today. I also bought the deck pod to show you guys because it's just super cool. Uh, also, if you're a One Piece gamer, like you can pick these up. It has limited like graphics on it, so you can still use it, and it has a really cool feature. Uh, but I just wanted to show off some of my, my pulls for the day because I had some cool stuff. And my sealed deck, uh, maybe we'll turn it into like a little fun thing. You guys can tell me maybe I could have built something different. All right, but let's go into that. I'm gonna tilt the camera down. Uh, here we go. All right. So I had the TIE Fighter playmat because that's all they had left. I wanted the Darth Vader one because I'm a big Vader fanboy, but unfortunately I couldn't. Um, but I had like the nutty, aggressive, like uh, red, aggro build i actually had a lot of good cards um i had green squadron a wing which is like one of the best cards i had double spec four soldier which helped me like ignore blocker basically uh if you guys don't know some of the keywords um he kind of takes away uh blocker i had double whaley and an open fire for like removal options i had i, I had to look for playables this is where sealed kind of fails as a format <laughs> like Sometimes you would need to find like five, six, seven cards to fill out your deck. Um, but yeah, I had pretty nutty early drops. My deck was very aggro slanted. I was playing Jin Red. Um, Jin was like being touted as like one of the best leaders for like a limited format. It did okay. Um, I don't think our card pool supported it enough. Again, I was very low to the ground. Like if this was Sabine, I probably would have won all my games. <laughs> um, but Jin was okay. I just did it because I had a lot of the stuff in these aggressive colors and I didn't have another leader to take advantage of this. Um, what else did we have? So we had a lot of the rebel um, or heroism stuff. I got to stop calling it that because they're <laughs> they're not all going to be rebels. But I had a lot of the heroism stuff. Um, I had to plug in some stuff, good stuff from yellow, like Crafty Smuggler is an amazing two drop. Uh, comes in shielded, so it's just a free attack basically for trading. Uh, Green Squadron A-Ring, one of the best two drops in the game. Um, I was able to take over space a lot. I had a pretty decent space board most of the time. Like, my opponents could not answer me uh, once I got going there. Um, a big part of the game, like, you can choose which lane to commit to. Like, if I was losing on the ground, which I normally was, because, again, a lot of my early bodies are kind of little poopers that just sit on the board. Uh, and if they don't get their value early, they are not probably going to do much late game. Um, but yeah, so I curved out and I stopped at five. I didn't have anything above five anyway. 
um, in the colors that we chose, so I just went with it. Um, but again, we had a lot of good stuff. We <clears throat> The best card I pulled for the day, at least for the deck building stuff, was the red um, three. Give all my other heroism guys raid one, uh, so that's plus one whenever they attack. Uh, itself has plus one. It's in space, so like you're you're not going to be able to answer me basically um, unless you have a good uh, space pool. I had some blockers for the ground to like clog it up, uh, just because we also had a fair bit of cunning stuff, so it was very easy to turn it on. My leader was cunning as well, so like so long as I had a cunning character on board, I was able to like clog up the ground a little. Um, again, we had some decent removal. We had double waylay, so like just to tempo our opponents, which I did. Uh, in the game that I ended up tying and losing, <laughs> I, I lost the dice roll with Snake Eyes. I, it was not meant to be. It was not in the cards for me. <laughs> uh, so I got Snake Eyes in that one game. Uh, on that roll, rather. And then, again, just really good space stuff. Um, I probably should could have played a lot better in a lot of my games. Obviously, I'm still learning all, along with everybody else. Um, like four stable i don't even think uh what's it called tabletop would have prepared me enough for today like i i just need to play the game more with real people um uh these gray cards are amazing uh this was whatever this was just another two drop early thing i probably didn't need it but again i didn't have much to play anyway um but these guys were great like just a sentinel space and then this because i had so many ships in the other lane uh, it was very easy to have like an ambush ground guy and on four that's not bad that was like really efficient uh for me and it had a nice five health pull um this i was able to use with Jin to make it stick a little longer so i was able to like kill something and then use Jin, um have it attack but re reduce the power of one of the enemies by one so it just made me trade it slightly more efficiently but it mattered it mattered a lot uh honestly uh so again She's a much better leader in limited than she is in constructed, but like a fun card for sure. Um, we had a lot of, again, just a really aggro pool. It just didn't work out all the time. Uh, I ended up actually losing to a Han Solo player who pulled Han. So he had a rare leader to begin with and he pulled Han Solo character. So he was doing the combo to me every time. And then <laughs> he showed me later after the game, he was like, I also had access to Mace Windu. So he had the Nutter Butters. So he could go Han early because of the way Han's ability works to cheat a resource into play. So on five resources, he goes to six, deploys the leader. Uh, and then on the turn after that, um, he's able to deploy his seven drop a turn earlier, either one of them, and they're both pretty nasty. Uh, they both have ambush, they both kill things. <laughs> they will both wipe your board. So um, I just lost, I couldn't put enough pressure early sometimes because uh, he was also playing kind of aggressively in the early uh, phases of the game. But that was it. Uh, our sealed pool, in my opinion, was pretty cracked. Uh, it just didn't work out in every game. And then obviously the the way ties work in the game were crappy. So it, it is what it is. Um, but that's it. That was really cool. And then I'll just go over my sealed pool. Um, and then again, if you think I could have played something else differently, let me know. Um, some cool stuff. We had Hyperspace Chewbacca. I pulled a security complex. I did not have these. Those were the packs I opened after the fact, I believe. I think. I'm just gonna throw these off to the side. I did not have this or this. Well, I'm gonna get there. <laughs> uh, yeah, I didn't have this arm entrenched. I did not have Ezra, Electro Staff, and these things. Okay. Um. So I was originally going green black and trying to force boba um i think i had this um i was considering this um there were some interesting choices in green um to try and play boba fett i had bosk i had a couple early tie fighter plays which is actually where the playmat comes from um i had these guys which are cracked if you have Bobo on board because they come down the same turn uh, whenever this attacks I can pump my leader by plus two plus two I had consortium bib fortuna not so much I didn't have a lot of events to play off of it I had seven fleet defender uh, I had overwhelming barrage like I I'm already know I'm gonna get flamed in the comments for people who know what some of these cards are <laughs> like I had a lot of reasons why but it was the filling out the rest of the card pool that was gonna be the issue for me 
I think I was coming up to like 21 cards and then trying to find things that weren't just jank was getting tough for me. Um, there was also an option for possible blue, uh, white blue, and with my cunning stuff. Um, I had these guys, uh, cargo juggernaut for like a nice thick uh, defender in the, in the late game rather. Um, a nice 2-4 shielded. I had to make an opening. Um, some more cheap Sentinel stuff. More Sentinel. I had a Kanan. The Ghost. Like, again, I feel like I had a bunch of different ways and I kind of just got, like, blinded by the aggro stuff. Uh, I definitely probably could have played a slower game. Um, couldn't play the that. Yeah, and that was about where the blue stuff ended. I also had access to uh, Idian. Iden, rather. Um, IG and then Krennic as like my other leader options. Um, I did not unpack this. I was actually saving it for the camera. Um, you do in your pre-release kit get the two leaders. I do love that they use this wax paper stuff. It just makes it so much nicer. <laughs> I hate uh, opening one piece back sometimes because I feel like I'm going to break open my cards. However, the dreaded Pringle of the foiling style is here and I, I hate Pringles. <laughs> but the cool thing is um, the front side of the cards for whatever reason are foil, but the character sides are not, which I'm not a fan of, but these are. Uh, these are foil on the front. They're really cool. I actually didn't know that they were foil until I saw them in person. Um, these were also options for you in the pre-release as leader options. So those were my choices for leaders uh, along with Chewy. Um, again, let me know if you think I could have went in a different way. Did I have anything else? My red black stuff wasn't great. I actually got a hyperspace stormtrooper, which is really cool. <laughs> but my red black stuff was just medium, in my opinion. Uh, these were double red cards. Um, the best thing being like uh, this one for trooper. Is it trooper? No, I'm sorry. It's just whenever it attacks a damage unit, it gets plus two in overall. I did pull a Veers. Um, and then some of these guys but again my my pool was looking kind of slim outmaneuver i think was something i could have like sideboarded in one of my games possibly maybe against the han solo deck i always forget that we had the sideboard option so um as for my green heroism stuff like i had alliance dispatcher uh but not too much else to talk about but my uh, my actual legendary that i opened was uh home one so again, something maybe I could have leaned into. I just was not a big fan of the eight cost. Eight is a lot. Um, granted, for all the stuff that people were saying in the community, like, again, sealed is random. But I definitely could have probably played an eight drop in a lot of my games because the games went longer than I expected them to. Uh, granted, we were all still learning. So we were like reading, and etc. Oh, this was the other thing that made me want to play Boba. I did have double double of that guy, so maybe I was just an idiot. I probably <laughs> I probably could have got away with doing it. Um, I'm just bad. But yeah, I, I could have forced it somehow. I think Boba was probably the best play, and then either like Luke or Chewie as my leader with like heroism, vigilant stuff, maybe. Um, but that's it uh that's all i wanted to share with you guys i think the game is good i think it's fun the multiple different ways to play the game is a beautiful thing to have especially early on um and then just again the gameplay is so engaging i really do think that you guys from one piece and even magic and a bunch of other different games would enjoy it so i hope you give it a try this weekend if you can still get into a pre-release some places do still have them open um, and if not, try uh, next weekend when the game officially launches. So that's it for me, guys. Thank you guys so much for watching. Oh, before I forget, I'm showcasing Mocha. No, I'm joking. Uh, the Deck Pod is this really, really awesome product. I was a big fan when I saw it, and I was like, bro, I have to buy it. I have to buy it. Again, wasting money on things I don't need. <laughs> um, it's like double layered. But it's it's so clean uh obviously i'm a huge fan of the ip so the the little um graphics on them are okay uh it doesn't matter to me i like it um they come in all the aspect colors and each one will have the uh symbol for each one so i had villainy uh again i'm a vader stan uh and the cool thing um 
is that they're magnetic. They come off um, from either side. You don't have to open it up all the way. Um, they're fully removable. The graphic on it is nice. Again, I like it. It's very clean aesthetically. Um, the inside also has it embossed there, embossed, however you want to call it. Um, the case on the side is for your leader, and it slides in. It's a little snug, I'm not going to lie. Um, and it opens up, and you can slot your leader in there. Uh, it's very sticky. Um, I use snap fits for my One Piece card, so um, I'm going to try this out for a little bit. I'm not 100% sure. Well, actually, we'll use Jin since I have a couple copies of her, so if I mess her up, it's not a big deal. Um, this is without a sleeve, though. Um, I like to put an inner sleeve on most of my cards, even when I'm using uh, like my snaps. Um, but this is, this is nice, and then you just slot it back in. Um, again, it was a little snug to get in. Uh, but yeah, that's tight. But uh, if you like having like a cool little aesthetic, you have it there. Um, oh boy. Well, I'll, <laughs> I'll mess with that in a little bit. Uh, there's also a small compartment on the inside. I believe, I believe there's a compartment on the inside. Let me just see if I can open this. Ah, right, right here. So this comes down, the flap in the front, and you can put all your like little pieces inside. Like I literally just opened for you guys now um, to have all your tokens. Um, the pre-release stuff that you do get, this is the box, has a bunch of the little tokens for you. They're not great, they're just punch out tokens. It's, Again, just nice things to have, but you can put all your little tokens in there. Your dice, I think dice probably works better for this game personally, um, but there are a bunch of little token things like uh, shield tokens, experience and all that stuff that you can just put in there uh, and just have it on there. Uh, this all closes up again, magnetic, and then you, your deck will go on the top. Um, this is only 30 cards, but I'll just put it in there for you. Like I still have plenty of space. Um, if you wanted to have like a Twin Suns deck, which will eventually go from 50 to 80 as more sets come out, they've already said, uh, they should be able to fit pretty comfortably in there uh, and just pull your deck out. But I like it, really cool uh, product. Definitely pick it up. Um, and again, just a nice little slot for your leader. Uh, it works well with One Piece too. <laughs> but that's it, that's just fun to show hey that. Guys, thank you guys so much for watching. Peace.